Okay, so that's the Stay Alive unit itself completed. So we'll just pop that to one side just for now. Uh, and what we're going to look at is uh, the actual decoder itself and where we're going to fit the Stay Alive wires uh, on, how, where we're going to solder them on. So for this particular one, we just need to remove the body. Um, for those of you who didn't see this in the previous video, um, we uh, installed a mega bass speaker into this, into the roof. Um, so I'll just spin this around because the, the body is connected to the chassis. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the decoder itself here. This is the Hornby Class 37 TTS decoder. We've got the depression here where the speaker used to be and that's where we're going to fit in the Stay Alive unit. So what we need to do is to wire in the Stay Alive unit here uh, onto the decoder there. So I'm just going to remove this again from the body. I'll take the capped on tape wrap off and then we'll have a look at the solder pads and where we're going to get these wires soldered onto. Okay, so that's the decoder removed from the chassis and I've just popped that to one side and I've taken off the insulating tape so we can see what we're, we're dealing with. So for those of you who don't know a huge amount about Stay Alive's, basically what they do is they store the electricity, uh, the energy coming from the track and when there is a cut to that electricity, so whether it's a defective track, or inch for all points, bit of dust, they feed that stored energy back. So what we want to do is we want to be connecting the, um, the capacitor, the Stay Alive unit, into the bridge rectifier on the chip. And the bridge rectifier is the bit that takes the, the kind of the kind of alternating the DC current and makes it into DC. Uh, and also with a, a DC feed, it takes the DC and ensures that the polarity is always the same. So on these particular chips, um, the bridge rectifier you can see is the four diodes here. I'll just get the wee the wee uh, pointer. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's the bridge rectifier circuit on this particular TTS chip. Um, and uh, on all TTS chips I've seen, they're absolutely identical. So uh, that is where it will be on yours. Um, you will also often see on other ones, like Hornby's very basic TTS, uh, uh, decoder, the non-TTS one, you'll also see four uh, diodes. And again, that's a rectifier. So what we need to do, or well, I've already done it, but what you need to do when you're working out where to stick the rectifier is to find out which is the common positive, and in this case, it's in here, uh, and which is the negative, and in this case, it's on this one here. So we'll just have a quick look at a diagram anyway, just to make a wee bit more sense of that. Okay, so to help us have a, a closer look at the, the bridge rectifier, I've taken this photo, I've blown it up and I've popped on some um, annotations and I will make this available to download if you're interested. So again, these are the four diodes here that I was talking about uh, and on this one here we've got the, the positive common and you'll see here actually that the track from this diode goes to here which then links on to the blue common. And then on this one here we've got the, the negative um, and so that is the, the part of the circuitry that we want the negative from the stay alive to go to. Now on this side it's really easy because, well because that track goes to here, we've got a solder pad there which is exactly what we need. So it's dead easy to get the positive side of the capacitor stay alive circuit onto there. Well, dead easy as long as you've got a good steady hand when you're soldering, but it's easy enough. This, however, is not so easy because it's uh, you know it's very, very fine in there. It's a, a small uh, surface mount component. There's a lot of potential um, to, to mess it up. <laughs> Let's just call a spade a spade. So um, I, uh, I had a wee look on the internet to see if anybody else had done this, and there is one or two threads. Um, and uh, I also snouted about with my uh, my multimeter just to see if this this track went anywhere else, uh, and it does, which is which is excellent news. Um, this track um, appears on the other side of the decoder, um, on the uh, the chip. Um, there is a, a pad that we can we can solder onto. So I'll get another uh, diagram and we'll have a look at that particular pad. Okay, so here we are on the reverse of the chip. Um, and uh, I've done another diagram here showing uh, where we need to solder things to. Um, over here is that positive which comes off the common positive which is always blue. So there's a solder pad on this side of the chip but there's also a solder pad on the other side of the chip as well so you've got a choice there. Um, now that uh, other pad that I was talking about or the other part of the bridge rectifier with the negative, when you trace it through what you find is that actually it appears on this pad here. 
Um, and this is the, well, I think they're often called cobs, chip on board. It's a, there's a sort of chip under there with a blob of resin on top. And my guess is that um, the, uh, the TTS decoders are probably all exactly the same apart from this. And this will be, I would assume, where the sounds are kept. And that if they're doing a class um, 31 chip, they'll just solder on the class 31 sound. If they're doing a class 43 MTU or Valenta, then it'll be a different one again. That's my guess. Anyway, but the good news is that this tab here, this solder pad, um, is the, the negative side of the bridge rectifier. So what we need to do then is we need to get our um, stay alive capacitor um, and we need to get the red wire, which is the, the positive, and we'll attach this here to the blue. Um, and then we need to get the black wire, which is the negative, and we'll attach this over on this side here. So that's what we'll look at doing next, soldering these wires into place. Okay, so for this next step, what we need is a soldering iron. Um, and what I would suggest is that you get a soldering iron with a really fine tip on it. If you don't have a fine tip soldering iron, I think you'll really struggle to do this and you might make a complete hash of the chip. So I'd recommend you only do this if you've got a fine pointed uh, soldering iron. We'll also need solder, of course, as well. And the solder, again, should be really fine solder. Um, if you've got a big uh, lump of solder, it's likely to flow everywhere, so uh, very fine solder. Um, and also um, some flux. Um, I love this one, this is a particularly good brand I think for this, but some kind of flux and probably flux that you don't need to clean off as well, because it can be quite hard cleaning it off, so no, no clean flux. Okay, so the, the other thing that is vital for uh, this fine soldering is something to hold everything in place. Now, some people like to use those uh, helping hands, the wee crocodile clip devices. I've got those. I use them for some things, but for this really fine soldering onto decoders, what I find works best is just a little bit of blue tack in the right position, uh, and that will hold both the chip and the wire in just the right position. As long as you don't apply too much heat to the blue tack direct, it doesn't melt, but it does hold everything exactly where you want it. Okay, so the other thing that we need to do in terms of preparation, just before we start soldering anything onto the chip itself, uh, is to strip back the, the two wires from the Stay Alive unit uh, and to pre-tin them. Now what I've done is I've stripped them back by about one millimeter um, and I have put a small amount of flux on and I pre-tin them so they're ready to go. But do make sure that you pre-tin these wee wires because it will make everything so much easier. Okay, so just going back again to the diagram, and I'll just pop that up onto the screen really quickly. What we want to do first of all is to connect um, the, uh, the negative wires, the black wire on this one from the Stay Alive, onto a pad here on the chip. So the one that we want to use is one, two, it's the third one along here. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to pop a tiny bit of solder flux onto that and flow just a slightly additional bit of solder onto the top of it. Uh, and that will enable me to then have a, a better kind of solder platform to then come and solder the leg onto. So I'm just going to apply just here a tiny little bit of flux onto that. You don't want it too much because you don't want it to be flowing the solder everywhere. We'll pop that to one side and then we will bring in the soldering iron with a nice clean tip. We'll pop a tiny bit of solder on it and then we'll just come in here. Solder that one. There we go. Yeah, in fact, that's all we need. So all I've done is just popped a tiny additional bit of solder just on top of that, fresh solder, so that we'll be able to solder the wire on. And do make sure when you're doing this, if you want to do it, it's not an absolutely mandatory step, but if you do do this, just don't get too much additional solder on. We're talking about really small amounts here. If you flow too much extra solder onto that, you might end up flowing it underneath this chip uh, or onto other joints, and then it'll just get really messy and become a much, much bigger job. Okay, so now that we've got a little bit of additional solder on that tab, I brought in the negative wire from the Stay Alive unit and I have secured that into the exact position that we want it using a little bit of blue tack. And remember, this is a pre-tinned wire and we have also added on some extra tinning uh, to, the, to the solder tab. So all I'll do now is I will just get a very small amount of additional flux um, and I'm just going to, again, a very small amount, not too much at all, and I'm just going to flow that over the top of the, the wire and also the tab, just a very small amount there. There we go. 
uh, and that will just help this solder joint to form. Um, and uh, the next stage is actually soldering, so uh, fingers crossed and let's get the iron onto it. Okay, so before I do any fine soldering work, uh, I do like to really thoroughly clean the tip of the iron. Um, and then I tend to put on a small amount of fresh solder as well, so it's just a tiny bit there, and that's all we really need. Uh, and then we bring in the soldering iron like this. We just apply a little bit of pressure here. And there we go. And that's it. That's all you need to do. <laughs> and do hold the, the iron there for as short a period as possible because there is a lot of sensitive electronics. But once you've got that solder on, you've got everything pre you you've got a wee bit of flux, just a wee touch of the soldering iron and that's normally all that's required. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we could use the, the, um, the blue wire tab here, uh, that common positive, but because there is another tab identical on the reverse, I think I'll probably use that because I've got a feeling that if I try to solder on another wire onto this side, it'll probably make that blue one pop off. So I think what I'll do is I'll reverse this chip and then we'll double check which pad we're going to solder onto on the reverse. Okay, so I've reversed the chip over, and just to remind ourselves, we want to take the uh, the common pad um, and attach this red wire to it. So the common pad is this one here, um, and again, I'll pop the diagram back up on the screen just now while I'm talking, just so you can double check that. But there shouldn't be anything on this side that is soldered to this pad. So again, what I'm going to do is pop a little bit of flux on there, flow a little bit of fresh solder onto the top, and once I've done that, then we can bring in the red wire and solder that onto the pad. Okay, so that might not come across all that easily because it's really fine stuff we're doing here, but I've flowed a small blob of solder onto the top of the pad here. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm going to um, probably just bend this wire very slightly uh, and I'm going to bring it in like this um, so that these wires are all coming out in the same direction and I can wrap them all up together. But we will uh, secure this into place, so again with some blue tack, just into there and we'll get it soldered onto that tab there. So I'll just get, off camera, I'll just get all the blue tack and stuff lined up so that we're ready to go with the next soldering stage. Okay, so we're just about there. I'm just uh, using these little, little tweezers here just to get everything lined up exactly where we want it. I think what I'll probably do is take a little bit of the blue tack here actually, just pull it off the side there and just stick it behind this wire here just to make sure everything is in exactly the right position in there. Just like that. There we go. Excellent. Now, there's bound to be lots of expert solders out there, and I would never claim to be an expert solder. <laughs> You'll probably absolutely shudder at my use of blue tack, but honestly, I find this is the absolute best way to hold these things in exactly the right position so that you can come in and out with the soldering iron as quickly as possible and do as little damage um, as possible as well. So um, I would avoid using black tack. Black tack's way too sticky and you'll be forever trying to get things off. But a little bit of blue tack uh, is absolutely ideal. So we've got all this lined up anyway. And what I'm going to do again is I'll come in with my uh, liquid flux, tiny little bit of liquid flux here, um, really small amount. Don't want to overdo it at all. Um, in fact, there's too much on there. Generally, if you can see the flux, you've probably put too much on. So but we'll just pop in a tiny little bit there. There we go, that's all we need. Pop that to one side there. Um, and uh, again, clean the tip of the soldering iron so it's nice and clean. I think with this one, I'll flow in a little bit of fresh solder and then just clean that off again. There we go and uh, I'll pop a tiny, tiny little bit of fresh solder on the end. That's all we need. Um, okay, so in we go, and hopefully we'll get this one first time as well. Yep, that's it, first time, excellent. And again, just a really quick dab with a soldering iron. If you've got the temperature, I've got it on about 360 degrees Celsius just now. So if you've got a good bit of high temperature, if you've got flux in place, wee bit of fresh solder, it goes on that quickly. So anyway, job's a good one. Next thing, we'll get all this fixed back up together, back into the chassis, get the body on, and then we can test it. 
Okay, so that is uh, most of the blue tack removed out of the way and we have released the decoder. I've just double checked visually the solder joints and they look fine. So what I'm just going to quickly do is just to probe about with my uh, multimeter just set on uh, resistance or the bleeper continuity. And I'm just going to probe about just to absolutely double check that there's no hairline connections between anything and that, say, the red wire does have continuity to the, the blue pin and that kind of thing. So we'll just have a quick, a quick check here. So we'll just touch the blue pin. Yep, we've got the continuity there. We don't have any to the pins on either side, so that's great. Uh, and I think what we'll do now is we'll try and double check this one here. So we will put the... This is where it gets quite tricky. <laughs> so we'll pop this one here and here. Yeah, excellent. Brilliant. So everything is checking out continuity wise. There's no shorts I can see. We've double checked the polarity uh, in the um, Stay Alive unit as well, just to make sure everything's fine. So um, I'm going to wrap a bit of Kapton tape around this and we'll look at repositioning it in the chassis. Okay, so we've got the Captain tape uh, wound around that, and again, that is an electrical insulator, but not much of a heat insulator, so it should allow some heat to disperse while keeping shorting at bay. Uh, and we have the Stay Alive capacitor. So what I'm going to do is, um, I am going to, again, stick the decoder down here. I'm going to pop a little bit of black tack on and around the capacitor. Um, and we'll pop that into the space of the void where the speaker, the original speaker used to be. And then we'll plug the decoder back into there again. So that's what I'll do. I'll crack on with that and we'll come back uh, once all that's completed. Okay, so that is the decoder in place. We've fixed the uh, the Stay Alive unit, the capacitor, the diode and resistor. Uh, we fixed this into the wee depression with some black tack. It's not going anywhere. We made sure that everything is heat shrunk so that there's not going to be any shorting out. Um, and I have plugged the decoder back into the decoder socket. The one thing that I would mention is that sometimes Stay Alive's, when you fitted them, particularly I think if the chip hasn't originally been designed for them like this one, um, sometimes it can affect programming. So I have tried this one out already and it, it programs fine, but what you might want to do is to pop a little switch or a little socket or something in line with uh, the, the legs to the capacitor so you can switch that off if you're having any problems with uh, with programming. The other thing that they sometimes say helps as well is that if you make sure that the, the uh, capacitor is fully charged before you start to program as well, that can often get around any problems. But just one thing to remember there that you may need to put in some kind of little connector to allow you to disconnect or switch off that. But anyway, we've got it all in place. So I'm gonna go and uh, put the lid back on now and we'll pop Pop it onto the test track and see just how much stay alive capacity we get. Okay, so we've got the test uh, track out here. We've got the body back on the loco so we can see it in all of its glory. And one thing just to mention before I, uh, I give it its first test is that um, with uh, TTS decoders, when you install um, a stay alive capacitor, you have to switch off DC, DC running so that it will only be able to run on DCC. Um, for those of you who don't know, most DCC decoders allow you to run your loco on a DC um, or analog layout. Um, but that plays havoc with the Stay Alive capacitor. And what happens is um, when the power is interrupted and the capacitor kicks in, it shoots out the energy in one burst and the wheels spin off and then everything stops and you don't get any sound. So we have to switch that off. And the way that you do that is by subtracting four from CV29. So as long as CV29 is higher than four, subtract four from it. Um, and then you will be able to um, use the Stay Alive capacitor properly. If it's less than four, then it's probably already got DC switched off, DC running switched off. Anyway, right, okay. So I've got it uh, hooked up here to the Z21 um, and uh, let's, let's give it a wee whiz. Okay, so we'll get a bit of motion going. Excellent, so uh, we'll do it again, we'll work out how long that was. Let it charge up fully. Okay, 
One elephant, two elephant, three elephant. <laughs> okay, so I reckon we're probably looking at uh, somewhere in the region of about two and a half seconds that that stay alive capacitor has added to it. Now, if you've got dirty track or initial frog point or something like that, two and a half seconds with the sound running is absolutely amazing. I suspect if we switch the sound off, you'll get longer than that. So I'll give that a shot just quickly before we bring the video to an end. Okay, so that's the loco moving with no sound, so I'll let it move for a little bit of time there so we can let the capacitor charge up. And we'll take it off and we'll count some elephants again. One elephant, two elephant, three elephant, four elephant, five elephant. So about five seconds, I reckon. So without sound, five seconds of stay alive. With the sound, about half of that, two and a half seconds. So pretty good result, all things considered. Okay, so there you have it. For the price of uh, a capacitor, a resistor, and a wee diode there, you can fit um, stay alive capacity to any TTS decoder, sound decoder. You can also use exactly the same principle for Hornby's normal basic decoder. You just have to find uh, those two pads on the bridge rectifier circuits. And also actually the same approach for making a stay alive will work for loads of things, including carriage lighting too. You can use exactly the same setup there, capacitor, resistor, diode for coach lighting. Okay, right, so I'll, uh, I'll draw it to a close there. I hope this uh, video has been useful, um, something a wee bit different to, to some of the ones I've done before, and definitely something that um, you know anybody can try at home, so long as you've got a, a steady hand, you've got thin solder, you've got a fine-tipped soldering iron, um, and you've got a bit of patience. It is something that most people can at least attempt. Um, but uh, anyway, if you've got any queries or questions or suggestions about anything that I've said in the video, please leave them in the comments section below. If you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe. Um, and I have loads of other content, a big backlog at the moment of content coming out, not least uh, an, an update on the lens itself. So please do tune in soon to see what else has been going on at Strathpeffer Junction. So anyway, for now, all that's left to be said is cheerio for now. Bye-bye.